Hey there, Bridget Lynn Dog Offsire is going to take three parts today. Um, I've just been kind of scattered today because I was finishing closing up my offices and so that I can be more of a free bird and farm and work on some farming stuff and travel, maybe do some workshops. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Maybe do some farming. Wouldn't that be absolutely incredible? Anyway, uh, third part of today's video, and you know, it's interesting, whenever you have post-traumatic stress disorder or really traumatic stuff happens to you, you know, there's parts that, it's not that you forgot, it's just your subconscious mind does not want you to talk about. Because you know what, you're not supposed to say bad things about people, even if it's the truth. And I think that's why a lot of people get in trouble in the Admiralty legal system, is because if you've been through a post-traumatic stress event and then you end up in court um, you're gonna just automatically lie um, and you won't even know why you lied and then you get found out that you've purged yourself and then you're discredited right so it's always good to face the truth and tell the truth so going back to the homeopathic board there's only two that I know of in the United States they were started by Harvey Beagleson. He got totally effed over by, there was um, um, a, you know, international homeopathic doctor here in Reno who people come to see, but he's like complete fraud. Um, most of them that are under the board or on the board are complete fraud. Um, and um, they uh, were working a deal in 2009, a backdoor deal, uh, so that they could um, control the alternative market, you know, as doctors and and homeopaths, and then you know cut everybody else out, including the supplement business. So you can't even trust colleagues or the same people that are involved in, say, your market, right? Say my alternative health market. They're criminals. Um, and, you know, they were known for, for example, the same homeopathic doctor. Um, he was the one that got um, Harvey Beagleson's medical license in the state of Nevada revoked because he was competition. And Harvey taught this other homeopathic doctor. And then he pays, you know, senators off in the state of Nevada. They file, you know, fake shit against Harvey Beagleson and then he goes to court with his attorneys and the Attorney General of Nevada walks in throws his case out Harvey said I knew then that you know I'd never step foot back in Nevada so um yeah and so the same this is the other thing too oh here we go down a rabbit hole so this, you know, homeopathic doctor, he thinks he's like king and God here in Nevada, ruling the homeopathic board. They're all criminals. Um, they, he decides, so while I'm lobbying, citizen lobbying, during 2009, go back to the first video, part one, um, I was having meetings because I was trying to disclose to whoever would listen, massage therapists, other Reiki people, all kinds of people. And a lot of these people had gotten thrown out of their offices illegally with fake desist and desist from the state of Nevada and these boards. So I had huge people coming to my meetings. Well, then what happened was is some of my colleagues in alternative fields decide that, um, they think that I'm a pit bull, how I'm going after. Well, I'm underneath, you know, seven of the most um, amazing legal people who have been citizen lobbyists since 1973, and they're, they're the ones training me. So I'm doing everything I can to, you know, squash some bills that are coming through that are bad. So they decide to create subgroups. Okay, these are supposed to be colleagues, right, in the same alternative fields. Because they thought that they could work with these senators. Well, in the end, yeah, bit them in the ass. Um, and uh, they looked stupid. That's all I have to say. Um, so they, like, turned on me. They started other groups. You know, it was, like, so 
weird and strange and bizarre. So when I was going through all this, everyone like basically turned their back on me. So then this homeopathic doctor uh, and his wife would come in to my meetings undisclosed. People were pulling me aside saying, oh, we should just let him talk. They were hammered drunk. This homeopathic doctor and his wife are heavy drinkers. They're always hammered and they leave restaurants hammered and driving. I mean, this is the thing is, it just like, oh, so criminal and corrupt. I mean, you know, if you're gonna get a good practitioner of whatever it's gonna be, make sure that they eat well, make sure they're in halfway decent shape, make sure that they freaking walk their talk. Cause you know what? They cannot elevate you to health. You are going to stay stuck in sickness because they're in sickness and they're hiding it. So, um, so anyway, he starts showing up to my meetings and he showed up to this one meeting I had. There was like, you know, a hundred people there. And we were talking about what we were going to do. What was the next stage against this bill? And I was disclosing like what's going on and, and how they're trying to erect these new boards that operate completely out of, you know, the judicial systems and like all kinds of crazy stuff. And here he comes walking in and this other holistic douchebag motherfucker. Sorry, I hate him too. Um, he, uh, he, he, I think is still hiding at Steamboat Hot Springs, which is like one of the creepiest places of all time like this religious sect, you know, and I hate to say that, but it's true. You know, a lot of the older members and the elders, I think are good people. The people running it are wacko, full on nutcase wacko jobs and doing like really weird stuff. Um, and a lot of these weird, you know, people kind of, I don't know. And you know what? I think it's good. I mean, what they do is sun gazing and stuff like that. They worship the sun in the sky, not the sun on the cross. However, a lot of the people involved in it um, are nuts. So anyway, so this doctor who's now hiding, you know, at Steamboat Hot Springs um, was like, oh, yeah, let, you know, Mr. Blah, blah, blah talk you know, give him, give him the floor. So I did. And he like went into this whole thing to all of us practitioners that, um, they have lobbyists and attorneys and they're going to handle, um, you know, our rights and, um, our, um, issues with this new bill, this, um, complimentary medicine act. I think it was like SB 69 or something like that in 2009. And that, you know, so don't go to your legislature in behalf of yourself. Um, give all your complaints to us and all your affidavits and, and we're going to handle it. Meanwhile, he's hammered. Um, so when he got done talking, I just was like, I stood up and I said, you know what? I totally disagree. These, the homeopathic board is acting criminally. The reason why they want you to go to them is so that they can control it. So the legislature, you're not seen there and they're, they're going to, they're going to get control over the whole alternative market. They'll have to be signed off by doctors. And these are going to be the doctors that are going to do it. And you're going to be out of practice. And you, you think you've lost already from being kicked out of wherever you've been kicked out. Just wait. These people are going for the jugular. They do not give a rat's ass about us. Anyway, it all turned out to be completely 100% true. They were working back deal, deals with the medical board, um, a whole bunch of senators, some assembly members. I mean, it was like unbelievable, right? But, you know, our system is totally corrupt. So why shouldn't it be corrupt on a state level? So when I was going through all that stuff, you know, on top of it, I was attacked even by people that are supposed to be remotely in the same fields and have the same understanding. So, you know, it's hard, you know, I'm still kind of working through the anger and the hostility. Um, and, you know, having to be in Reno and Nevada all the time, you know, nobody ever comes up to me and thanks me that they're still in business today that they were able to stay afloat. 
a lot of them didn't make it. A lot of them didn't want to fight legally. Um, you know, because what they would do is they would do things like um, if the massage board didn't scare you, even though you weren't licensed by them. Well, oh, what's that? A rife machine? Oh, then they send the pharmacy board after you. And you have a notice on your office door to contact the pharmacy board. Are you kidding me? Because you have a rife machine? So then the pharmacy board tried to say, oh, yeah, we regulate, you know, any type of healing machine. And that should scare you people, too. Because all you people are promoting these healing machines. Okay, well, they're regulated by the Federal Pharmacy Board. And you get caught with one without a license, a pharmaceutical license. Guess what? Federal prison. Yeah, federal prison. Um, so anyway, that's still going on today. Um, because they look at it as like medicine, right? So um, who dishes out the medicine is the pharmacy. So there you go. And they don't want you to have a machine that can replace medicine. So, and you, you have to be licensed in order to have it, right? So do you have an MD? Did you go to school for 12 years? Did you, are you an actual legitimate, you know, operating pharmacist? Well, make sure you're careful about your disclosure about those healing machines. So anyway... Sorry, I kind of went off on a tangent, but I guess today was the day that needed all to kind of come out um, publicly. But it was a hard, um, difficult, and I'm still kind of angry that um, all these other practitioners, you know, the ones that survived, don't give a shit. Um, they just, uh, it's hard to take personal responsibility and then you end up taking responsibility for everybody else. And then, you know, you're only faced with anger and hostility because they don't understand and no one wants to take personal responsibility. This is the conclusion I've come to this week. This is why um, people make the choices that they do. They turn their life over to these doctors and these doctors do all kinds of spirit mental stuff on them. And then they end up, you know, effed up. Well, you didn't take any personal responsibility. If you would have ate like a somewhat healthy diet, you wouldn't even be going through what you're going through. So it's your fault. Do you know that people get welfare for obesity? That tells you kind of like what kind of cards the medical system's playing, right? So just some extra thoughts. Doctors have to get malpractice insurance. Practice on the documents, it actually says to practice medicine, right? Well, what is that? Because they're practicing on you. They don't know what they're doing. If they knew what they were doing, they wouldn't have to have insurance. Because what happens is, is that they harm you, fuck you up, treat you like a, you know, scientific experiment or whatever else it's going to be. And you end up maimed and then you're smart enough to get an attorney and the attorney negotiates a settlement. And then you sign it. It has a non-disclosure agreement because we're paying you off, which means you can never talk about what you got, how you got it, your case. We're paying you off. And guess what? It doesn't go into the public court system as public record. So no one ever knows how many people that this doctor or doctors have totally screwed over. They don't even care. You know what? There's a story. Um, Dr. Diamond, who was one of the most fabulous holistic practitioners, homeopathic doctors, medical licensed doctor of all time. He died um, a while back. But anyway, one of the things he told me um, was that when he um, went to medical school. He was from South Africa and he went to medical school and um, did his internship and stuff here in the U.S. And he accidentally killed someone. He didn't mean to. It was like a total accident. But he was totally heartbroken over the whole thing. Like, just crazy. And he said, you know, he went before the hospital board and they basically said, oh, don't worry about it. We expect you're going to kill lots of people during your internship. So, don't worry about it. That's just part of, you know, um, you becoming a medical doctor. Like, we're not stressed out about it. Don't worry about it. You know, don't, you know, it, it happens, you know. 
And he never could forget that. And so as soon as he got his medical license, he made sure he didn't kill any more people. And, um, and they, he said, you know, because they drive you, you know, you're only supposed to be there like 35, you know, hours a week or whatever, but they drive you. Um, and he's like, sometimes you're like 95 hours a week, right? You're back to back. You never leave the hospital. You're exhausted. So you're going to make major, major mistakes. Also, there are hospitals that are education hospitals only. Like here in Reno, would never go to renowned medical. It is a teaching hospital. Most of the doctors are not doctors. And most of the nurses, not nurses. Most of the other practitioners, not other practitioners. If you're going to go to a hospital and you have insurance to go to a certain hospital, you may want to change that insurance and go to a non-teaching hospital. Because guess what? You have 99% chance of getting killed at the teaching hospital. And they don't disclose it. They don't disclose that it's a teaching hospital, right? So, you know, do yourself a favor. <laughs> do your education when it comes to healthcare. Um. Anyway, okay, so the secondary thing. Um, so we covered practice, malpractice insurance. The second big thing is that doctors always talk about exploratory surgery every surgery you're going to have is exploratory if you look at the documents okay so if we went to mars in a spaceship we're exploring mars which means we've never been to mars we don't know anything about mars we're going to document our trip to mars which means that we're off the hook with a lot of responsibility and a lot of liability i mean even if we blow up our spacecraft and kill the other people on it you know that's part of the deal because it's exploration it's, it's exploratory so they get away with not having any personal responsibility of the surgeries that they do on you because you know what humans are different they're all different we're all different we do not get sick the same our hormones are totally different we do not get well the same you know for people like me um, I have a sacral fusion, which means that um, my lower lumbars are naturally fused to my sacrum. It's an anomaly. I have eight vertebrae in my neck, not seven. Anomaly. I have um, tons of roots in my teeth, like way more roots than other people have in their teeth. So, I mean, yeah, there's a general bottom line of, you know, um, of a person but nobody's the same. I like take my, you know, your dog. They can't get the, if they put your animal under, they can't get it right. When Jing got fixed, um, she drooled for like a year. I treated her neurologically, you know, with adjustments and reboots because I realized they gave her a stroke because they over medicated her because they can't get it right either. So when you're having surgery, it's always gonna be exploratory surgery because they don't know. They have no idea and they are not certain. So I'm not saying, you know, like I avoid all medical doctors. The only time that I would go to one is like, I would go to Dr. Harvey. Um, I would go to, you know, completely alternative doctors that are under the radar. Um, uh, um, and the only time, I mean, now I even question I have a friend of mine who is a, um, a family, you know, bloodline, original healer, and he can set bone long distance. So I'm like, well, why in the fuck now would I ever go to a doctor? I mean, you know, basically you could heal your bones, even if they got reset without a cast, a cast totally destroys your muscle tissue. It destroys how you walk. I mean, it could take like a lifetime to recover that with the right practitioner. Like I know because I work on all those kinds of people. I worked on the people that are fucked up from doctors. Uh, fusions, lots of back fusions and all kinds of crazy shit. The stuff that I've seen is just like unbelievable. Like how could you ever consider doing that to a person? Like how, how could you ever consider it? So... Anyway, I 
All right. So anyway, going to release it and let it go now that I've publicly talked about it. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for listening. Um, really appreciate it. And um, thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Virgil Dolgoff, Projects of Economics and Urban Farm Project. Bye.